Good evening. The British minister with responsibility for Hong Kong, Lord Keith Ness, says attempts by some legislators to change the territory's political structure is straining their relationship with China. But he says ties between Hong Kong and Beijing have improved as a result of better Sino-British relations. Jenny Lam reports. Lord Keith Ness said recent visits to China by senior British ministers have improved Sino-British relations and he believed Hong Kong has benefited from that. He assured China that the legislation of Hong Kong will not change, but he added that LegCo has the power to set up its own committees. Lord Keith Ness is pleased with the progress of the work of the Sino-British Joint Liaison Group, but he said there is no chance that LegCo can get involved in these high-level meetings. What you can't do is pick the bits that you want out of a joint declaration, say we like those, and tear up the other bits. That would undermine confidence in Hong Kong quicker than anything else. He reiterated that the decision on the number of overseas judges in the Court of Final Appeal is irreversible. Much better by discussing it, clearing the air, getting rid of any misunderstandings, and proceeding on a smooth track forward. Lord Keith Ness said there are many technical points on the court agreement that still have to be looked at, but he added that he would not recommend a court structure which contravenes the basic law. Hong Kong's legislators have been accused of ruining the territory's chances for greater democracy. The accusation was made by a delegate to China's nominal parliament one day after Lord Keith Ness told the councillors not to waste any time in setting up the court of final appeal. Legislators who will face a government bill to set up the Court of Final Appeal worsened the growing row over the court's structure by giving it a vote of no confidence in Wednesday's LegCo session. A delegate to China's nominal parliament, the National People's Congress, says Beijing will now be less confident about Britain's authority in future negotiations. Well, maybe they will have a little bit of doubt as to, you know, whether the British representative can actually commit on behalf of this government to anything and having arrived at an agreement where they will eventually come back and say, I can't do it. And blaming directly elected councillors for the court mess, she believes there's now little chance that China would agree to a faster pace of democracy. Now they may have to face the possibility of the British government becoming a laughing stock internationally. And all the time they've been complaining that other people are trying to make the Hong Kong government a lame duck government. All the time. And now they are doing it themselves. China, Britain and the Hong Kong government have all stressed the agreement on the court I'm, is not renegotiable. Legislative councillor Gilbert Lung has appeared in court on bribery charges. Susan Yu reports. Mr. Leung arrived at Eastern Court this morning with his wife and several friends. The 38-year-old councillor has been charged by the ICAC of offering a $50,000 bribe to regional councillor Fung Pak Tai. No plea was taken from Mr. Leung, who will be leaving for Australia tomorrow as part of a regional council delegation. He says the case against him won't stop him from working. The court has ordered Mr. Leung, who is out on more than a million dollar bail, not to discuss the case with Mr. Fung, the main prosecution witness. The case has been adjourned until December 19th, pending further investigations by the ICAC. Meanwhile, the ICAC says it has received 59 complaints of alleged malpractices concerning the direct elections. 53 of the cases are still under investigation. The charges include bribery, providing false information during registration, and exceeding the campaign spending limit. Overseas now, and the Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, has urged Soviet republics to abandon attempts at forming a new union. At the start of talks between Russia, the Ukraine, and Belarusia on the future of the Soviet Union, Mr. Yeltsin instead proposed the formation of a Commonwealth of Independent States. Meanwhile, the Soviet president, Mr. Gorbachev, has sacked his army chief for health reasons. But the unofficial Soviet news agency Interfax said the real reason for the dismissal was difficulties in reforming the armed forces. In another development, Mr. Gorbachev has appealed to the Republic's leaders to help avert a food crisis in Moscow. He said the city's supplies of meat, sugar and vegetables would run out in a few days' time. He warned of unrest unless the food shortage is resolved. 
The UN Special Envoy Cyrus Vance has held last-ditch peace talks in Belgrade as the Croatian cities of Dubrovnik and Osijek came under artillery fire. Mr Vance has condemned the attack, described as the heaviest in weeks. The 14th Yugoslav ceasefire is in shambles. Heavy artillery and mortar fire once again fell on the eastern Croatian city of Osijek. More than a dozen were reported killed just the day before. Among the structures damaged in the latest attack, the railroad station. Trains were being prepared to bring the injured out of the city. Croatian radio reported a monitor from the European community was injured. In Karlovac, southwest of Zagreb, new fighting broke out between the Serbian-dominated Federal Army and the Croatian National Guard. Numerous buildings were destroyed, just as residents were getting used to going out of their shelters during the day.